Hello, my name is Dr. Dan Netto. I'm medical director of the Health Reach Diabetes Endocrine and Nutrition Center of Exeter Hospital in Hampton, New Hampshire. And today we'll be talking about partnering with patients to improve therapeutic outcomes, Ingratin-based therapy for type 2 diabetes. Let's start with reviewing the actions of glucagon-like peptide 1. GLP-1 has the effect of increasing insulin secretion, which helps to control postprandial glucose. It also reduces glucagon release, which reduces hepatic glucose production. It has an effect on delaying gastric emptying and also directly reduces appetite. Secondary effects include increased insulin sensitivity and increased cardiovascular protection and increased cardiac output. Next, let's compare different incretin therapies, the GLP-1 receptor agonists and the DPP-4 inhibitors. The GLP-1 receptor agonists and DPP-4 inhibitors both increase insulin secretion, reduce glucagon secretion, and tend to increase glucose uptake. However, only the GLP-1 receptor agonists reduce food intake and reduce gastric emptying. This accounts for the differences that occur with body weight with the GLP-1 receptor agonists helping to promote weight loss and the DPP-4 inhibitors being weight neutral. In addition, uh, both of these agents tend to reduce fasting plasma glucose and help to reduce postprandial glucose. Um, there are also differences in terms of the A1C reduction with the GLP-1 receptor agonists having a more robust effect in reducing hemoglobin A1C up to 1.5 percent. GLP-1 receptor agonists tend to reduce body weight whereas DPP-4 inhibitors are weight neutral. They are similar in terms of benefits on systolic blood pressure and lipids. Their safety and tolerability profile are quite different. The GLP-1 receptor agonists by achieving supraphysiologic levels have the risk of nausea and diarrhea and there has been described the risk of acute pancreatitis with exenatide. On the other hand, DPP-4 inhibitors have the potential for severe allergic reactions. The GLP-1 agonists are given by subcutaneous injection, the liraglutide once daily, the exenatide twice daily, whereas the DPP-4 inhibitors are given orally. This study compares the effect of long-acting insulin versus exenatide in patients on background therapy of metformin and glimepiride and followed for 26 weeks. In both groups, A1C fell 1.11%. The difference occurred in terms of body weight. With exenatide, patients lost 2.3 kilograms, whereas with insulin glargine, they gained 1.8 kilograms. A similar study with long-acting insulin versus liraglutide showed that with the liraglutide, there was a 1.81 kilogram weight loss whereas with insulin glargine, there is a 1.62 kilogram weight gain. Effects on hemoglobin A1C were similar in the two groups. Limited data is available on the combined use of insulin with GLP-1 analogs. There is a retrospective study that suggests that when you combine exenatide with insulin, that there were modest decreases in hemoglobin A1C, body weight, and total daily dose of insulin compared to baseline. The use of GLP-1 analogs with insulin is not currently approved by the FDA. However, it is common practice that if, for example, a patient is on metformin plus a GLP-1 analog, that basal insulin can be initiated at a dose of 0.1 to 0.2 units per kilo to target a fasting glucose under 120. This next slide compares the duration of action for the two GLP-1 analogs which are currently available. It can be seen that exenatide is dosed twice daily. Its serum concentrations rise, 
then fall to baseline twice during the 24-hour period. In comparison, liraglutide is given once daily and its serum concentrations are maintained for the entire 24-hour period. This slide summarizes a trial which compared the effects of exenatide versus liraglutide. Exenatide was dosed at 10 micrograms twice daily and liraglutide was dosed at 1.8 milligrams once daily. Whereas there was no significant difference in body weight by the end of the trial, there was a more significant reduction in hemoglobin A1c with liraglutide compared to exenatide. There was also a greater percentage of patients who achieved a hemoglobin A1c less than 7 with liraglutide versus exenatide. Looking at fasting plasma glucose, there was a more profound effect with liraglutide versus exenatide. And uh, in terms of insulin resistance, there was a suggestion that HOMA B was more greatly improved with liraglutide versus exenatide. Regarding lifestyle, the introduction of GLP-1 analogs is a good time to introduce a healthier diet and increased activity. What I often recommend to patients is that they try to increase their consumption of whole grains, vegetables, fruits, legumes, and avoid sugar, white flour, beef, cheese, and ice cream. Um, when combined with metformin, GLP-1 analogs are very effective at helping to facilitate weight loss and also the combination has a very low incidence of hypoglycemia. To summarize, incretin therapy is a novel way to control blood glucose by regulating insulin secretion in a glucose-dependent manner. GLP-1 analogs are more efficacious and provide the benefit of weight loss compared to DPP-4 inhibitors. GLP-1 analogs provide greater weight loss but similar efficacy compared to insulin glargine. The combination therapy of GLP-1 analogs and insulin analogs may be an option for some patients. Greater reductions in hemoglobin A1c and fasting plasma glucose were observed with once daily liraglutide compared with twice daily exenatide. Lifestyle intervention should be initiated simultaneously with the use of GLP-1 analog therapy.